These are the directions for programming assignment number six. The objective is to demonstrate proficiency reading files, using string methods and slicing strings, working with dictionaries, and using stepwise development to complete the program. It's also a real-world example of how you can use Python as a tool as a cybersecurity professional. Your program will read a Linux authentication log file, look for all the failed password attempts, slice out the username, and count each time that username appears in the file. And that seems like a pretty tall order. That's why we use stepwise development. First, take a look at this. Here's a house with no front steps. You can certainly get into the house, but it's not so easy, is it? You have to climb all the way up just to get through the front door. When you add steps, it makes it a whole lot easier. You climb up a little bit at a time. So with this programming assignment, you'll climb to the end a little bit at a time using stepwise development. For step one, all you want to do is open the authentication log file, read each line, and display it. First, about the authentication log file. You want to save it in the same folder in which you have your program. That way you can use relative addressing. And you have to make sure that you get the name exactly right. So do a right click, do a save as, and make sure that the file name is auth.log.1. Don't let the operating system put stuff in there that doesn't belong. There we go. So it's auth.log.1 and save. Note that the log file is a plain text file and you could read it if you wanted to in any text editor such as TextEdit or Notepad or Idle. But .1 is not a common file extension type. And common file extensions are sometimes hidden by the operating system. So if you wanted to open it in, in one of these uh, applications, text editor applications, you may have to specify any file type. Okay, for step one, this is the easiest step. All you need to do is open the log file, read each line, and display each line. And it should look something like this when you run it. Okay, so it's showing all the lines in the log file. That's it. That's worth 50 points. When you're done with that, you want to save the program as step1.py because you're going to be submitting this. Note that for each step in this assignment, there's uh, some notes and potential gotchas, problems you might run into, and what might be the source of those problems. Okay, so for step two, this one is worth 15 points, and all you need to do in that is start with step one, so make a copy of that file, and as you read each line, check to see if failed password appears in that line using the in operator. Only display the lines in which you're able to find failed password. Otherwise, don't. Here's what that should look like. When you run it, you should see this. Okay, note, every line that's displayed here has failed password in it. When you've completed step two, save the file as step2.py. Step three is perhaps the most challenging, and it's worth 25 points. Before we go into the details on that, let's take a look at the lines that are displayed. In here, you'll see the username. In this case, the username is root. And you'll see this a lot. It's the most common username used in these attacks. But other usernames are possible as well. And they could uh, be longer. The username appears at different offsets from the start of the line. So what you need to do is you need to find a pattern that appears immediately before the username. In this case, invalid user space. If you can find the start of that, the offset of that within the line, then if you count these number of characters, pretty soon you're up to the start of root. So this offset and the length of this pattern gets you the offset of the username. Look also beyond the username. 
After every username, there's space from space. If you can find the start of space from space, you have the end of the username. So the start of the username and the end of the username, the offsets for those, are what you use to slice the username out of the line. That's what step three is about. So for just the lines that include failed password, use find, the string find method, to find invalid user space. That gives you the offset from the start of the line. Determine the starting point of the slice by adding the length of invalid username to its offset. So the offset you get is the beginning of it. You want the end of it, so use the length for that. And you can either count these characters by hand or you can use the len function to do that. Then you want to use find the find method again to find space from space. These two values serve as the starting and ending points for your slice. Put the slice in a separate variable and instead of displaying the whole line, just display the slice. And you'll see root quite a bit. Here's what it should look like. Then save your file as step3.py and make sure to upload it with your assignment. If you're having problems with your slice, here are some potential gotchas. Find returns minus one if it doesn't find the pattern. So you want to find out what is find returning. That's what auth.log.test can help you do. That's got just one line in it, so it just makes the output a whole lot simpler to deal with. So replace temporarily auth.log.1 with auth.log.test, which is provided in this assignment. Then you want to add a line that displays the full line and also the offsets that are found by find. If find is giving you values like 55 and 72, then that's probably not the issue. It's probably that you're not setting up the slice properly. Step four is worth 10 points and involves using a dictionary. After you've sliced the username, check to see if it already appears in the dictionary using the in operator. If it doesn't, create a new item in the dictionary using the username as the key and setting it to a value of one. If it already appears in the dictionary, Use the username as a key to get the value, add one to the value, and store it back in the dictionary. Once all of the lines of the file have been read, use a for loop to display the key and the value for each dictionary item. Once again, the key will be the username and the value will be the count of the number of times the username appears in the dictionary. Here's what the output e-program should look like. Remember to include header comments in each of the files and submit step one, step two, step three.py and homework six.py with your assignment.